Hello and welcome to the latest uh, installment of Fit Gardener webinars. Uh, my name is John Kowalski. I'm part of the marketing team here. And uh, today we have automated color and appearance control online, robotics. Um, Ms. Ray Roby, our business line manager for automotive, will be presenting today. And uh, a couple things, if time permitting, if we have some um, extra time available, at the end, we'll be answering some questions. So if you have any questions, please log them in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. You'll see a Q&A box. Um, if we do run out of time, um, we'll get to those questions and follow up with you individually. Uh, we are also recording this presentation and tomorrow morning we'll send you a link to the recording as well as the uh, presentation that you'll see, uh, the PowerPoint anyway. Um, Ray's also gonna be going through some uh, live demo of some software. So with that, let me turn things over to Ray and uh, thanks for joining us. Ray, it's all yours. Hello everybody. So hopefully a lot of you have seen some of the stuff on robotics before. Um, I added um, some slides to give you a little bit more information and then we actually came out with a new, what we call smart robotics software. And I just wanna give you kind of an overview of that. And then what the data can look like um, in smart shirt. So, why do we wanna know the surface quality, the color, the appearance, all these things? Because we want uniformity and we want consistency from vehicle to vehicle and also with the add-on parts. Uniformity is really important because a lot of people consider uniformity on a vehicle to be an indication of the best in class for that, those vehicles. So when they see a vehicle that they have maybe two adjacent parts that maybe don't match or aren't uniform, um, then they feel like this may be a lower quality vehicle. We do have the handheld units that we use for color and for appearance. Um, the one thing with robotics is it's very consistent. You're always measuring the same location at the same time. So for robotics, what we can do is we can measure either in the location only where the body is available to be measured, or you can have an offline cell at the end where you can measure all the add-on parts plus the body itself. Um, it's really important that you have good uniformity between, like I said before, the add-on parts and the body. Um, you can get harmony data, and you know that the repeatability of these measurements is gonna be good because you're always measuring the exact same location. I mean, the handhelds are good, but you still have kind of that operator interface where maybe they're measuring slightly in a different location than before. Um, the other thing is that it's really good for your process consistency to make sure that you're always maintaining the same level of quality and you can predict faster if you have an issue. This is just an idea of what a cell could look like. Um, there's been a lot of improvements in the robotics since the cell was done. Um, so the instruments or the robots can be smaller and the cell can be smaller too. So this is what it looks like. <clears throat> On the top, you can see the BICMAC, and the bottom is the wave scan robotic. And in the middle, this is the pre-positioning sensor. So you have to have some type of sensor that's gonna put the instrument in the correct location so that you're always getting the same information. So for the wave scan, obviously you wanna mount it on a sensor arm it gives you a lot more data than if you just did handhelds. I think for most OEMs, um, they probably measure a couple vehicles of the same color 
for the same model for the same line per week. And with robotics, you can get a lot more information and a lot more idea of if your process is consistent. This is a non-contact measurement. The curvature radius can be less than 500 millimeters. Um, the distance to the surface is 15 plus or minus two millimeters. And then you have the angle to perpendicular SB plus or minus two. So this is something where the robotics guys would set this up and they would make sure that all these parameters are maintained. And the scan speed can be from 50 to 150 millimeters per second. How does it work? So basically the robot's gonna put it in a pre-positioning center or the start point. Then the distance between the sensor and the car is decided by the either ultrasonic or the vision system. Then the sensor head is adjusted 90 degrees to the surface. And then the robot moves to the step two, which is point two. And then the robotic tells the instrument to measure. So once you go from the start point to the end point with your defined speed, the instrument while it's moving is measuring. And then these values are saved in an XML file um, and it goes into what we call BIC link. And then we also have this new software program called Smart Robotics that I show you later. And then all the data can go into Smart Charts. So if you're using WaveScan handheld and WaveScan robotic, you can have all the data go into the same exact database and you can get more data with handheld and the robotic measurement. So what's important? Of course, we wanna make sure that if we're measuring with a handheld or we're measuring with a wave scan that we're gonna get the same data. So we did some studies <clears throat> to make sure that we had a correlation. And you can see here, the dullness is pretty good. The WA is really good. WB, very consistent, WC, very consistent, WD, also very consistent, and WE, very consistent. So this ensures that whether you're measuring with a handheld or a robotic, that you're getting the same information. This is a comparison of the long wave and the short wave, which a lot of the OEMs still use um, for their appearance data. That I also correlates very well. And then we come to the BICMEC. So the BICMEC, you get the six angles of measurement, you get the sparkle, and you get the graininess, which is what is currently in our handheld. Um, and it has really good performance because of the LED technology, so it's very temperature and humidity stable. So even if you have the BICMEC, say like out in your plant, like on a line somewhere, the temperature and humidity is not gonna affect your measurement. So in this picture, you can see there's four pins on the bottom of the Big Mac robotic, just like the Big Mac handheld. Um, these make sure that you get good contact with the surface. And everyone always asks me how much um, pressure you really need to get it to work. And it's not a lot, like if you took your four fingers and like just slightly pushed them against your hand, that's like all the pressure that it's putting on the, in, or on the vehicle itself. So we haven't had any instances where the pins have actually caused like a mark or an indentation on the part or the body itself. There's also this foam light protection and this keeps the ambient light out. Um, you can see it in the bottom picture. It's foam, so it's not super squishy, very technical term, but um, it has a little bit of give, but not a lot. So it's really good to keep the ambient light out. And then for the curvature for the Big Mac, 
um, the radius has to be less than 400 millimeters. So this is how we work with the pins. This is exactly the same as the handheld. So you have flat, low, medium, high, and for the robotic, we do not use the pin setting of off because the pins have to engage at some level in order to make sure that the measurement is completed. If we turn the pins off, um, the instrument would not know that it's in the proper position to get the measurement, and so it would not measure. I won't read through all of these different settings, but um, they're kind of specific, and usually either your integrator or your robot company would know how to handle these. So for the Big Mac robotic, the robot moves into the pre-position, just like for the wave scan. Um, the distance is set up between the sensor head and the car body. The sensor head again is adjusted to 90 degrees to the surface. And then the control of the robot is transferred to the robot or to the Big Mac pins, and then it's going to tell you that the four pins actually touch the body correctly, and then it's going to take the measurement. And when this is done, it's the fine positioning of those Big Mac sensors that actually make sure that the distance to the surface is correct. And then the data is transferred after the measurement starts into an XML file and back into SmartChart. So this is important for um, our automated BIC systems that the wave scans measure the same and also the BIC Max handheld or the robotic measure the same way. So we did some studies to compare. <clears throat> So what we did was we took, this is a metallic sample that's achromatic and chromatic, and we looked at the delta L for both of these, and we took the Big Mac standard that was in the handheld, and we used it in the Big Mac robotic, and this is the correlation data that we got. So this black line in the center that's moving back and forth just a little bit is actually the robotic, and then down here, the same thing. And then if we look at the A value, also a very good correlation between the two. And then the C value for chroma is on the bottom here, and that's also a very good correlation. And then the B value for the achromatic color on the top, also a good correlation, and the Q value on the bottom, also good correlation. All right, so when we talk about robotics, everyone asks, like, what is Big Gardener going to send me? So basically, we send you the Big Mac robotic, the wave scan robotic, and then this Big Link interface software. and your integrator on oh, smart chart and your integrator is going to send you the integration of all the measurement systems they're going to do either the ultrasonic or the vision pre-positioning the construction of the rotatable adapter so when you saw in the picture before you can have the same two instruments on the same robot and they actually can spin and then take the other measurement. And then the control system or the PLC. And also the programming of the locations. This is another question that we get asked all the time, how much process time is needed? So this number has actually gone down over the years that I've been a big gardener. 
I think originally it was around 50 seconds and now it's down to 20 seconds. So this is not because of our instrument specifically, but because of the innovations that the robotic companies have made. So you need to get your distance of the measurement, which takes about five seconds. You need to rotate the tool to the measurement position, which takes about two seconds. You need to position the position correction, which takes about four seconds, and then the measurement actually of the Big Mac robotic with effects is about nine seconds. So the total time is around 20 seconds. For the wave scan, it's a little bit faster. Um, you still have to do the correction, which is about 10 seconds. Um, to rotate the tool in position is about one second. And the measurement of the wave scan takes about three seconds. And that number for the measurement can also be reduced depending on the scan length you use and that speed that I talked about before. So one thing that we came out with lately is the new microglass. And this works the same in SmartChart as the microglass robotic. And here you can see the temperature stability, which is very good. And then when we go to the microglass online, this is only a 60 degree gloss meter. Um, it does need to contact the surface in order to get a good gloss measurement. And this does not work on like a full robot like the Big Mac and the Wave Scan do because it actually needs to be like in an XY plane. So if you had like a flat sheet that you wanted to measure, this instrument would do very well on that. Um, but it's not as easy to automate or the same automation as the wave scan and the robotic Big Mac. This is what comes with the glass meter. All the meters that we have come with check tiles that you would mount on the wall. And then before you would take a measurement, you would go to that location and take a measurement. You don't have to do this every time, um, but you know, maybe once every couple months, depending on how dirty the location is where the instrument is being used. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch to the smart robotic software. And this is brand new, so before, everything had to go through big, big link and you had to do everything manually. And it was a little tedious to say the least. So now in smart robotic, here we have a monitoring station so you can see exactly what's going on. And once everything's completed, it's gonna tell you the measurements are complete. Um, this OPC is not something that we supply it's actually something that has to be purchased from an outside company. But then you can put in the locations of where that software is. The devices, you can pick any devices you like. So here we have Big Mac picked. You could add down here under WaveScan a wave scan two or a wave scan three. We do have robotic wave scan threes now. You can go under output files and these you can send anywhere you like. So if you want everything to go into the same location, you can do that. And the other thing that I want to point out in the software and that I think is important is the thickness. You can now add thickness and you can also add robotic pelt. So if I look here under smart chart link, and this is how the data gets back into smart chart, the database is gonna pull your standards and your organizers from your main 
database.sdf, where all of your organizers and standards are located in Smart Chart. Or you can also pull them from an SQL server if you have a full SQL server. The BICMAC settings, you can pick like we do always in the organizers. You can pick the model, the color, the paint line. You can change these names if you like. Um, and also the vehicle on the check zone. And under check zones, you input these. So what we've seen at um, the robotics places that we've been demoing and also at the OEMs and part suppliers that have these instruments is sometimes they like to pick a symbol because it's easier and not use the actual um, check zone name. It's totally up to you. You can put anything in that you like. And then where do you want the data to go? You can add any database. All of the data can go into the same database. So if it's BICMAC, wave scan, thickness, pelt, any of that, you can put into the same database. Here is what the wave scan looks like. It's pretty much the same as the BICMAC. The thickness is a little different, and you also have to add a license for that instrument in order to be able to use it in this software. And the PELT settings, like I said, you have to load the PELT file first, but then you can do the same checks on. Here's where you can put in the actual color standards. Um, you can set it up for automatic measurement for the standard so that it's going to pick the standard that you want, or you can have a way to communicate with the software what color you're going to measure. Everybody likes to know what paint line it is. You can put the paint lines in, and then you can set a quality alarm for if you want a trigger that says fail, only when it fails. If you want it to be a warning or a pass, you can put those in also. And then, just to show you some of the data, so this is all the BIC data for BICMAC that we have in this database. So it looks just like the other data that you've seen before, so you don't have to learn anything new. You can pick any equation that you want for the standard. This one happens to be delta EGM. Um, and you can also do film thickness. And you can set this up to have your total film thickness, um, e coat, your primer coat, and your clear coat. And base coat would also be in here, but we didn't do that for some reason on this one. And then also your wave scan data. And you can pick whatever scales you like. So that's pretty much all I have. Are there any questions? Okay, thank you, Ray. Good stuff, lots of uh, stuff. Uh, we do have a couple questions um, too. Um, first from, from Cena. Uh, how would the robot measure uh, the FB or thickness? Can you specify it is a dual if it is a dual scope or any other type of thickness measurement instrument? So right now well, we can use the pelt and we can use the fissure. So Greg, are you on? I don't think he is. Oh. Is Gerilyn on? No. It's Corey on. No. Bob <laughs> St. Jim McDonald. <laughs> Field Maybe Bob, Bob, do you know? Or Jim, do you guys know? I don't know what that means, dual scope. Um, Cena, a, would you mind? Oh, go ahead, Bob. 
Um, it's a handheld device. So it's like the Fisher, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sina, I'm going to unmute you here. Would you mind elaborating a little bit on your question? Um, she just wrote Fisher is dual scope. Oh, dual scope is the MPOR. Okay. I'm getting texts from people. Yeah, so, so can you guys hear me? Uh, yeah, yes, we can. Thank all you. Right, um, so, so first of all, thanks for the um, answer. Yeah, I got my answer actually. I was looking for, so uh, I was looking to see how you guys do the film build or thickness. And then, um, so based on what I'm getting is either with pelt that gets, you know, layer by layer from E-code or clear coat or anything, or with a picture, which is like a preferred or in a more quicker a way to get the thickness. So I'm assuming, yeah. So I kind of like got my answer. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. Good. Thank you. Great. Um, another question here from Betsy, and she apologizes. She uh, missed the very beginning. No worries. Uh, Betsy will send it out, uh, uh, the recording link, as well as the presentation tomorrow um, as a follow up. Uh, but she asks, is the equipment available for continuous sheet paint lines? So oh, is it? So you're gonna have to unmute her. Yeah. Betsy, I, I just unmuted you here. Would you mind elaborating a little bit on your question? So can you hear me okay? Uh, yeah, we, we can. can hear you. Hello. Okay. Uh, hello, thanks for the presentation so far. Um, my question was around, sure. um, so we we paint con uh, coils of sheet steel. So the coils will be continuously moving through the line. They don't stop, or at least we try not to make them stop. And we, I wonder if it uh, sounds like from some of the presentation, it needs about 20 seconds to scan. So maybe we have to stop the line for 20 seconds to get that color reading. Am I understanding correctly? Yes, we have not done any trials with a moving line like that. So, I mean, I would think that potentially you'd be able to get the robot to track, but you would have to have like a location, especially if you're doing color, where you could get put enough pressure and not have the material move away. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. So we would have to stop the line. And was I right to, to think that's a 20 second delay? Yeah, so it's about, yeah, for the Big Mac, it's 20 seconds. For the wave scan, it would be 14. Okay. So you would have to wait. Yeah. That's all right. I'm just thinking along those lines. Right now, we have to stop the line anyway to take a sample, bring it into the lab, do all the paint tests, but including color. And this would be maybe a, a way to test our color in the middle of a coil, which is huge. Mm -hmm. So I think Jonathan wants to make a comment. Jonathan, is he on? He is. Let's see. Yes, I have. Jonathan, I'm going to unmute you. You're can you unmuted, hear me, sir? Yes. We can hear you. Yeah, I was just thinking about, uh, <clears throat> I mean, the, the color measurement itself, you're going to have to stop the line um, for that that time frame. But the wave scan, since it's a, it's a moving measurement anyway, um, I, I, would, I would assume if you could slow the line speed to match the measurement speed, or, or maybe we have a uh, a, a meeting, you know, between the instrument and the, the, the line speed of the coil that that could probably work without stopping. That would probably take some, um, you know, uh, engineering and uh, coordination. But I think, you know, from a me measurement principle, that could work without actually stopping the line. Yeah, I think that Big Mac would be a lot harder. I yeah. agree. But like I said, we've never actually tried it on a line like that. So it's 
we couldn't tell you for sure that it would work. It would definitely have to be something that we would have to try and probably on your site because I don't know how else we would be able to create the same situation. All right, well, thank you for the information. You bet. Thank you, Betsy. Um, another, and Jonathan, I'll just leave you unmuted here. Um, Jonathan's one of our uh, regional sales managers. So I'll leave you unmuted. You can control them on your, on your side. Um, question from Sean here. Has the robotic integrator provided tip speed limits for movement with your equipment at the end of arm tooling? So first I'd say thanks, Sean, for a tough question. Um, <laughs> I, don't for think, <laughs> I don't think that the uh, tip speed, I think that it doesn't matter because they have to wait for like the sensors to align and get in the correct position and then the measurement to get taken. So I don't think that it affects it, but if you have a different perspective, we can unmute you. Yeah. Sean, I want to you here. Hey, Sean. Yeah, uh, actually the question was more so about uh, looking at the data for the cycle time where I see 20 seconds per measurement. Uh, it would be the movement in between measurements. So if I was moving the uh, end of arm tooling from the fender to a body panel, uh, what those limitations, or do I need to get that from the robot integrator based on robot and tooling? So I would so say I, that it, go ahead. Yeah, it's just more so like, you know, if if you're looking at reducing cycle time, you know, uh, faster movements from location to location on the measuring points is where we could gain speed. So I was just doing that and that might be, like I said, I might've led you into a tough question and that might be something for the robot integrator to let us understand what the robot payload can handle or if maybe some of the guys have given you that info yet, I'm not sure. So the robots, the robots that I've seen I would say don't move very fast. Can I give you an actual time? I don't have that, but I know yes. that they're coming up with faster and faster and better robots. So I would think that it would just depend on what your application was and how yep. much you're willing to pay. Yeah, I got you. I, I, was, you I know that this was a tough question, but uh, I was just a little bit <laughs> curious on that. Thanks. Cool. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sean. Uh, got another question here uh, from Osman. Uh, can this be used for injection molded parts? So your injection molded parts, I mean, of course it could be used on those. Um, the only problem is are they textured or not textured? That's on you. I'm yeah, sure I'm looking, I don't, but. yeah, plastic. Um, I don't see him in the list. He may have had to leave. So we, we can follow up with him uh, afterwards. Um, next one from Josh here. Uh, if the, the BIC identifies a non-conforming color, will it alarm and or automatically scrap the bad parts? So this is not the first time I've heard this question. Um, that pass fail that I showed you in um, the smart robotics, you can set an alarm. Um, I know that some of the robotics companies were working on a way to like, if it fails to have it go into like a different spur so that someone can go in and visually check it. But I would never wanna say that just because it fails for color or appearance that you would necessarily want to scrap the part. But I mean, you definitely want to verify that it was okay. Okay. Um, Josh, I'm, I'm gonna unmute you here. Did that answer your question, sir? Are you there, Josh? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? 
Uh, we can. Yeah, we can hear you. We can. Well, okay. Welcome. Uh, yeah, I was Does just that, that help with the question. Yeah, I was just making sure that it had the capability to communicate with some type of robot, letting it know that it's it's a bad part and to put it to the side. Or if we had to, or I didn't know if it did that, or if we had to actually look through the data ourselves and find the bad um, color measurements. So I can tell you that it's, it's not, okay, so basically, SmartChart has to talk back to the integrators software and say, oh, this one needs to go to spur A. So it's kind of like both of us have to work together to get that to happen. Cool. But, but it can possible. be done, yes. Okay, yes. perfect. Thank you. Great, thanks. Uh, another question from Sina here. Um, can we read the color on a static target but with no contact to it, say a five to 10 centimeter clearance um, from it to the device. For the Big Mac, for yeah, the gloss okay. meter, or for the wave scan? Um, see, now I'm gonna unmute you here. Um, Are you there? Um, so, sure. yeah, so um, the reason of my question is, so we're thinking about reading color, so I'm assuming it should be the Big Mac, not the wave scan, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct, yes. Yeah. Yep, yeah. so I was, we were thinking about reading um, colors on targets that come straight from, from the oven, so we're talking about bodies that are like, I don't know, 160 degrees Celsius, we cannot have contact to them, but then we were wondering if we can like read the colors from them. It, it really needs to have some contact just so that it knows it's in the correct position. And right, I so know, go ahead. I'm sorry, so is it just the positioning, so say if we have like the positioning and everything set up, will we able to get like results from it? Like I said, these four little pins here, they have mm -hmm. to have some contact with the surface. How hot did you say it was? Um, well, we can do it as close as five centimeters. But he said like 160. Oh, sorry, 160 yeah, 150, 140 uh, minimum. I would have to ask Germany. I know that um, another company had the same question and I cannot remember what the maximum temperature was. Mm -hmm. It doesn't affect the instrument, but if you think it's going to imprint, I mean, obviously that's a problem, right? But it really does need to touch to make sure that it's in the correct position because it has, you know, those six angles that it measures plus the sparkling graininess. And if it's not like if you had it a little bit off, you're going to get ambient light in there, and that's going to be a problem. Well, yes, I understand that. Thanks. Yeah. But, all right, thank you. Uh, another question here from Sean. Um, if I have an existing cell that measures film build, can I integrate the big color robotics to the existing cell? Much nicer question, Sean. Um, yes, of <laughs> course. And if you have a wave scan and a pelt, you can integrate the Big Mac into that cell too. And all of that can get integrated into Smart Robotic and back into Smart Chart. The only thing you would have to do is they'd have to get a different head put on because you'd have three instruments instead of two. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, if, if people have other questions, um, please log them in the Q&A box located in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. We have a little bit of time left and would love to help you out with any um, questions or challenges you may be facing in your own facilities. Um, with the follow-up uh, email containing the link to the recording as well as the presentation, um, we'll also have links to register for some upcoming uh, Big Gardner web seminars like this and also um, our, some of our office hours. 
format, which is more of a brief presentation followed by uh, a longer open dialogue. Um, so stay tuned for that coming. Um, another question in here. Um, thanks, Mike. Uh, for an automotive OEM, how many robots would you recommend using to measure color on fenders, quarter panels, and a hood? Would one on each side be recommended, you know, totaling two, or, or would you recommend something different? You would definitely have to have two um, because you would and one would have to come over and measure the hood. And it depends on how many measurement locations on the hood you could have and how much time you have. So if you have a cell that stopped, like the cell that I showed you earlier, then it's really easy to measure as many locations as you can because the vehicle is stationary. If you only have a certain time frame where the vehicle is stationary and you want to measure multiple locations, depending on how fast you need to measure, you would need more robots. So it's all about cycle time is the biggest problem. Okay. Um, Mike, did that answer your question? I'm going to unmute it here for a moment. Yes, Are it does. There, Mike? Yes. Okay. That helped. Any follow-up questions? Um, or anything that, else that we, helps, we can uh, help with while we got you? Um, that's great. Um, that's all I had. I was just curious. Uh, thanks, Ray. Okay. Hi, Mike. Hi. Thanks. <laughs> okay. We can give it a few more minutes if, if anyone has some more questions. Um, so I can say a couple questions that we get. Um, yeah. Is, I mean, cycle time is the biggest thing, of course, because people want to not have to like wait for the vehicle or the parts to go to an offline booth. And we get questions about if you can measure on plastic parts the same as the bodies. And yes, you can. I mean, I think in the picture, I don't know where it is, but I won't go flipping for it. Um, you can see that there's fascias in there. And you can measure fascias. The only thing that you have to make sure of when you measure something that's flexible is that you have the whole entire carrier is one piece and you don't mm -hmm. have it where like you cut the ears off and you have flexibility there. Because then if the Big Mac goes to measure, it's going to push the part away from it. So that's the only thing about like fascia parts. but. I mean, for the majority of plastic parts, there's no problem to measure with the Big Mac or the wave scan. And the pelt is also okay. Mm -hmm. The pelt does take, it's not my instrument, but it does take a bit longer because there's a blow off sequence with the pelt. And then it has to spray um, deionized water on the part and then take the measurement. And normally people do a lot more film build measurements than they do say Big Mac or wave skin. So that would add a lot of time to your process if you wanted to do everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you, you talked a lot about consistency. Is, is that just the biggest thing when you're looking at integrating a, a robotics program um, into your color and appearance? So we've had situations in the past where Someone may be measured on like first shift a different way with like the Big Mac than on second shift. And they got a lot of conflicting data. So when you do things robotically, you always get the same exact location every time. So you know that that is actually what your process is sending out and you're not having any variation with the operators or anything like that. So to me, that's huge because then you can actually make process adjustments based off of the information that you're getting from the robotic instrument. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, Sean can maybe comment on his wave scan robotics that he has at Ford. Yeah. Yes. Sean, I'll, I'll unmute you if that's all right. You there, Sean? Yes. Uh, what What were you wanting me to comment on? 
the wave scan data you guys get at Ford that you use for all your process. Yeah. So, uh, I, I, what just the end result or just the fact that it's just, consistent and you know it's always in the same location. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, what we can say about that yeah. is, yeah, uh, we have defined location points. So if our control plan, we know that uh, the robot obviously is going to measure every time in the exact same location. You know, I don't want to get into politics there of you know cherry picking or sweet spot, but we know that the data is real, and it's going to be you know exactly in the place that we want to measure it, not around that area for the best measurement that might work. And so it's. Whether it's good data or bad data, it's real data. You know, that's mm -hmm. I guess that's the best way I could say it. And then you and can consistent. tell if you if yeah, and you can tell if something's drifting or something changed or if you need to go back and look at something. I mean, then you have to do a lot of work, but if you see your appearance data shifting a lot, you know there's something going on. Yeah, especially if you can see it across the entire unit, then you might be able to take a look at it for material versus if you saw something that just decreased on, I'm going to talk a body because of pain OEM, but if you just saw it on a certain panel, then you could identify application versus material. If you saw a general swing in your overall data for all panels, it might be material versus something that might be affecting left side, right side, move balance or applicator, that type of thing. So it will help you troubleshoot that way. Awesome. All right, thanks, Sean. I'll put you back on mute here. Appreciate your input as always. Um, any other questions out there? We just have a couple minutes left here. Um, we'd love to help any way we can. And so the, the integrators, they're working on quicker and quicker machines, Ray, just to, you know, get, keep those speeds, you know, getting quick, you know, tighter and closer. Yeah, because the other thing that we're working on that too, but um, we have a project hopefully starting soon that we're going to try to do these on a moving line. And this right. is a big project because if we can start to measure on a moving line, I mean, you might need multiple robots because you might only be able to have like a Big Mac and a Big Mac on one robot. And then the next robot has to have a wave scan and a wave scan, right? To do both sides. Yeah. But the concept would be to be able to do it on a moving line. The only problem with um, if there's a lot of vibration or if your vehicle or your part is not stable. So if you have like rocking in the line, that won't let the instruments measure, they'll actually fault out because you'll be like super too close or super far away, depending on what's going on. Mm -hmm. And that could be a big problem. But I think a lot of the people that we've talked to I think they have ways to stabilize the line and to minimize the vibration. And if we could do that, this would be a really fun project, you know, mm -hmm. for Vic to be able to do. And I think it would be really important to a lot of um, OEMs and the part suppliers because it could really help them take a lot more measurements and do it robotically. I mean, the other thing that's good about robotics is like, you know, now either you're pulling parts off the line to measure or someone's coming through and getting between people and measuring. I mean, this is also like, you know, something to do with like the COVID stuff and, you know, they don't want people so close together. So, you know, it would help with that. And then just the total amount of data that you could gather. I mean, I think that's one of the biggest things because you need a lot of data if you're going to use it to adjust your process or check your process consistency and maintain your quality. Mm -hmm. That's my biggest mm -hmm. thought. Mm -hmm. And if, if any of the customers want to see like a test cell with this, um, is that available? Somewhere? We have a test cell. 
And if someone wants to email me and ask me where it is, I can set up an appointment for you. Okay. Um, Ray's contact information, R-A-E dot R-O-B-Y at Altana dot com. Or um, when you get the follow-up materials tomorrow, you can simply hit reply. It'll come to us in marketing, and uh, we can get that information to Ray, and um, she can work directly with you and set that up. Um, so with that, thank you, Ray. Um, you know, thank you for the questions um, from the attendees. Um, thanks, Bob and Jonathan, for chiming in. Um, and uh, we really appreciate your time here. Um, hope you learned something. Um, you'll get this link tomorrow morning um, of this recording as well as the presentation. Um, so you can review with some um, colleagues or at a, a slower pace or whatever you like. Um, and if you have any questions, um, please reach out to us in marketing or your regional sales manager or to um, Ray directly. And uh, we're all there to, to help and uh, make your color and appearance shine. I had to say that, right? <laughs> Sorry. Good job. All right. With, yeah. <laughs> with, with, with that, have a great day, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on future Fit Gardener webinars. Thank you. Thanks, Ray. Thank you.